Some places feel strange the moment you see them. But in northern Minnesota, there's a waterfall that doesn't just look strange. It behaves like something from another world. Locals call it Devil's Kettle, a split in the Brule River, where half the water drops into a normal waterfall, and the other half simply vanishes. No splash. No mist. No return. For decades, people have thrown things into this swirling hole. Sticks, logs, tennis balls, dye, even small tracking devices, and none of them have ever been seen again. It's as if the earth is swallowing them whole. Some say it's a bottomless pit. Others whisper it's a doorway, a crack in the world where the water slips into another place. But what's truly unsettling is that for a very long time, even scientists had no idea where the water was going. This is the story of a waterfall that eats everything and the mystery that haunted Minnesota for half a century. Welcome to Earth's Hidden Mysteries. If you travel to the far northern edge of Minnesota, just a few miles from the cold shoreline of Lake Superior, you'll find a forest that feels untouched by time. Tall pines, black volcanic rock, a narrow river carving its way through the wilderness. This is Judge C.R. Magny State Park, home of the Brule River and the strange split that creates Devil's Kettle. Most rivers behave the way you expect. They flow, they fall, they move on. But here, the Brule River does something different. As the water rushes downstream, it hits a massive formation of ancient rhyolite, a stubborn block of volcanic stone that forces the river to divide into two separate paths. On the right side, the water drops into a beautiful, classic, two-tier waterfall, exactly what you'd expect in a place like this. But on the left side, something else happens. The river funnels into a dark, swirling pit, a perfectly carved hole in the rock, and it behaves as if the earth has punched a drain straight into its core. No roar, no plume of water rising below, just disappearance. Hikers who visit the park often say the same thing. They stand on the overlook, watch the entire left half of the river fall into the hole, and ask a simple question. Where does it all go? And for decades, no one had an answer. For as long as people have visited Devil's Kettle, the stories have followed them home. Not scientific papers. Not official reports. Just whispers. Rumors and the kind of tales that spread around campfires when the forest gets too dark and too quiet. It begins with a simple belief, one shared by nearly every hiker who's ever looked into that swirling hole. This place isn't natural. Long before researchers came here, locals believed Devil's Kettle wasn't just deep, it was endless. They called it a bottomless pit, a vertical tunnel carved straight into the earth so deep that even light didn't dare return. Some said the hole reached the center of the planet. Others joked, nervously, that if you threw a stone down there, it might come out in China. And the strange part? No one could prove them wrong. Because nothing, literally nothing, ever came back up. This is where the stories take a sharp turn. Over the decades, people have thrown all kinds of objects into Devil's Kettle. Small things at first, sticks, branches, a bright green tennis ball. They expected to see them reappear farther downstream. It's a river, after all. But the river stayed silent. So the test became bigger. Cans, logs, buckets, even entire pieces of driftwood longer than a person's arm. Gone, all gone. One group claimed they rolled a full car tire into the hole and waited half a day at the lower falls for any sign of it. Nothing. Hikers began saying the same chilling phrase. This waterfall eats whatever you feed it. Then came the darker stories. Whispers about hikers who wandered too close to the rocks. People who slipped. A man who supposedly dove in 
on a dare and was never seen again. There are no official records of such disappearances, but in towns around the North Shore, everyone seems to know someone who heard about a person who never came back. The legend grew, and with every retelling, the hole felt deeper, hungrier. Eventually, the rumors took on a supernatural tone. Some said Devil's Kettle was a portal, a crack between worlds, where water slipped into hidden caverns and never returned. Others believed it connected to Lake Superior through a massive underground tunnel, the kind no human could ever explore. A few even suggested the water traveled far beyond that, carried through unseen channels to another river in another state, maybe even in another country. To outsiders, these theories sound impossible. To the people who've stood above that swirling pit, watching half a river get swallowed whole, they don't sound so impossible at all. And that's the heart of Devil's Kettle. Not the noise of the falls, not the spray in the air, but the silence below it, the silence where a river should be. For years, even scientists admitted they had no idea where the water was going. And every failed experiment, every lost object, every rumor made the legend stronger. But in 2016, after nearly half a century of confusion, a group of researchers finally decided to settle the mystery once and for all. And what they discovered was something no one expected. For decades, people tried to solve the mystery of Devil's Kettle, the simplest way they knew how, by throwing things into it and waiting for the river to give them back. But the river never did. One of the earliest attempts was almost childish. A man picked up a fallen branch, tossed it into the swirling pit, then sprinted down the trail to watch the lower falls. He waited 10 minutes, 20, an hour, nothing. And when he finally walked back up the trail, the branch was nowhere to be seen, as if the river had swallowed it in a single bite. So people escalated. Hikers began carrying tennis balls sprayed with bright neon paint. Some wrote their initials on them. Some even numbered the balls just to be sure they'd recognize them downstream. Not a single one appeared. A local group tried something bigger, a full piece of driftwood, thick as a man's arm and long enough to stand upright like a staff. They pushed it into the whirlpool and followed the river for nearly a mile. Still nothing. And then came the dye test. A team poured an entire container of bright fluorescent dye straight into the hole. The kind that turns water radioactive green the moment it mixes in. If the water came out at the bottom of the falls, the entire river should have lit up like a glowing ribbon. But the river stayed dark. Not one drop of color appeared. Decades later, technology advanced and people tried again. This time with a small tracking device, the kind hikers used to locate lost gear. They wrapped it in waterproof casing, turned on the transmitter and tossed it straight into the vortex. For a few seconds, the signal was strong. Then it started flickering and within moments gone. No ping. No movement, just silence. Every test failed. Every object vanished. Every answer led to more questions. And the strangest part wasn't that things disappeared. It was that nothing ever came out. Not upstream, not downstream, not anywhere. Devil's Kettle behaved like a perfect magician. It showed the trick, let everyone stare right at it, and still revealed nothing. The mystery was starting to feel unsolvable. And even scientists, the people who spend their lives explaining the impossible, began to admit. They had no idea what was happening here. But in 2016, a small team decided to stop guessing and start measuring. And what they discovered changed everything people thought they knew about this vanishing waterfall. For nearly half a century, the mystery of Devil's Kettle 
felt untouchable, a puzzle that laughed at every attempt to solve it. But in 2016, a small scientific team from the Minnesota Department of Natural Resources decided to do something different. They stopped throwing objects. They stopped guessing. And instead, they decided to measure the river itself. The idea was simple, almost embarrassingly simple compared to decades of wild experiments. If half the river disappears into the hole, then the river below the falls should be missing half its water. So the team hiked up the trail on a cold morning in early spring. The kind of morning where the air bites your skin and the forest feels like it's waking up slowly. They brought nothing dramatic. No dye, no gadgets, no trackers, just scientific tools for measuring flow rate, the speed and volume of the water passing a given point. They began upstream, right above the split in the river. The numbers came back steady, predictable. The Brule River was flowing exactly the way a river should. Then they moved to the base of the falls, down where the water from the normal waterfall collects and continues its journey north. The team expected a dramatic difference. After all, half the river was supposedly vanishing into the earth. But when they checked the numbers, the river wasn't missing anything. Upstream and downstream, the flow rates were almost exactly the same, a near perfect match. It didn't make sense. How could half a river disappear into a hole and yet still reappear below without anyone ever seeing it? The answer was hidden in the rocks. The cliffs around Devil's Kettle are made of ancient volcanic stone rhyolite and basalt rocks that are incredibly hard and not the type to form giant caverns or deep underground tunnels but they can form small cracks narrow channels tiny fractures created by millions of years of freezing and thawing enough for water to travel through but not big enough for branches balls trackers or logs to the human eye, it looks like the left half of the river is being swallowed whole. But in reality, the water is slipping through an unseen path in the rock and returning to the main river, just a short distance downstream, below the surface, hidden by foam and turbulence. It was the simplest explanation imaginable. And for scientists, the numbers didn't lie. But this discovery also led to a far stranger question. If the water always comes back, where did all the objects go? Why did every stick, every ball, every bright green dye test vanish without a trace? What happened to the tracking device, whose signal died the moment it touched the vortex? And why, after decades of searching, has no one ever found a single piece of anything that went into Devil's Kettle? The flow rates answered the mystery of the water, but not the mystery of the world's most famous disappearing act. And that lingering doubt, that unsettling gap between science and legend, is why Devil's Kettle remains one of the strangest places in the United States. Science solved the question of the water. It proved the river wasn't vanishing into some endless void or slipping into a hidden world beneath the forest. But solving the water didn't solve the mystery. Because even after the 2016 study, after the flow rates matched, after the evidence pointed to a simple explanation, the legends didn't fade. In fact, they grew stronger. People kept asking the same uncomfortable question. If the water comes back, why doesn't anything else? Why did every stick, every log, every painted tennis ball disappear without leaving a single trace? Why did the dye vanish completely, as if the river absorbed it like ink dropped onto black velvet? Why did the tracking device's signal die instantly, long before it had the chance to re-emerge downstream? For many visitors, the scientific explanation felt too neat, too clean, too tidy for a place that looks and feels so violently strange. And in a way, they're not wrong because science only measured the river. It didn't measure the whole. No one has ever mapped the exact structure of the swirling pit. No one has seen the cracks where the water slips through. 
No one has recorded what happens in the darkness beneath the surface. So even though scientists can explain how the water returns, nothing can explain. What happens in that hidden space between the moment something falls in and the moment the river reappears below? That tiny gap, that unseen world, is where the mystery still lives. And it's why, even today, Devil's Kettle remains a place where fact and folklore blur, where science and superstition shake hands, and where a simple question still echoes through the forest. What else might this place be hiding? Even after all the research, after every explanation science could offer, Devil's Kettle still feels like a place that isn't finished telling its story. But this is only the beginning, because the next mystery we're exploring isn't something you can see. It's something you hear, or for some people, something they can't stop hearing. A low, unending vibration. A drone that rattles windows. A hum that follows people across cities, across oceans, across entire continents. From the UK to the United States, to New Zealand, to Canada, thousands of people report the same chilling sound. A sound with no clear source, no clear explanation, and no way to escape. In the next episode of Earth's Hidden Mysteries, we're diving into one of the strangest global phenomena ever recorded. The hum, the world's low-frequency mystery. If you haven't subscribed yet, you'll want to. Because once you hear the hum, you can't forget it.